Welcome back to The Deborah Peters Show. Very pleased to have you join me. Today, we're getting into part two of the Tesla code. Now, there's been a lot of action on the internet about the Tesla code, so it's probably no secret anymore. It probably never should have been a secret, but nonetheless, I promised you I would do a second part in the two-part series. I would like to know how you've applied it and how it's working for you, what kind of results you're getting. So we will get into that as we go through today's program. I'm Deborah Peters. I'm an international business coach and mindset expert with a background in repatterning human performance, human behavior, the thought process, the emotional programming that leads to a higher level of consciousness that you can use, that you can live out in your experiences in every area of your life. And so primarily we focus on business coaching, but a big part of that is showing our business leaders how to get into that peak performance space. And that is the point of this Tesla code video series. I'd love to share it with you so that all of my listeners could benefit from this tool and apply it and get a life that you really love, deserve and desire. So we're going to dig into part two. I'm going to share with you the experience that I'm having using the Tesla code and how I've had experience with it in the past in different areas of my life and what I've tweaked with it to find that works for me kind of on a personal level, just handling everything I handle. And so I would never promote something or suggest that somebody do something that I wasn't willing to or hadn't already applied, not just to my life, but to my thousands of clients across the world. So I have a, an evidence procedure, a feedback mechanism that provides me with information that then I can use to tweak the tool before I roll it out in my YouTube channel or on my social media. So this came up because I have always subscribed to the Neuro Linguistic Programming Repetition Tool that we reference as 3721. So in Neuro Linguistic Programming in the practitioner level, which I, I used to certify people in that um, modality and I may again it's kind of been on my radar <laughs> this last while and I've had people asking me if I'd be willing to run another practitioner course so it's a possibility so hang in there and stay tuned um, so with the 3721 the hypothesis is that with enough repetition of any thought any emotion, any behavior, that we can actually turn it into a habit that we become unconsciously competent about, meaning we really don't have to think about it, we just automatically do it, we just go into autopilot, and hence the term habit. Now, we aren't really sure where on that spectrum of three, seven, and 21 repetitions that this new pattern is going to become second nature, so to speak, because it really depends on the individual. It depends on the depth of your resistance. It depends on the magnitude of your programming that is to the contrary of what it is that you want. It depends on how intense the emotions, the negative emotions are that keep you stuck or keep you focused in something negative and sabotaging yourself. It depends on how long you have been practicing that old negative pattern. And it also depends on how you justify your limitations with limiting beliefs. You know, there's a lot to unpack here. But nonetheless, somewhere along that 
path of three repetitions or seven repetitions or 21 repetitions, therein lies a new pattern established. Now, the old saying was 21 days to create or change a new habit, which is actually erroneous. What they really meant and where they were deriving that from is the three, seven, 21 repetitions. So that doesn't have to be days, that can just be repetitions. Now, when you look at this from the Tesla code perspective, there is something very interesting about this because there is a similarity, but yet there's also a bit of a difference. And, and I'd like to explore that possibly today, maybe in, in lesson three or part three, I haven't decided um, how this is gonna flow yet because I wanna just let this be organic. I don't wanna make this contrived. When I'm, when I'm organic, I'm gonna shut off my phone, pardon me. When I'm organic, it's an, it has a tendency to, uh, to flow better. So in the Tesla code, the objective is 369. Now, if you remember, I talked about having three affirmations and in a positive written format and then having there be six times throughout the day that you actually rehearse those affirmations there it's all shut off and the part i didn't really go into any depth on was that once you rehearse for that each affirmation repeatedly throughout the day for up to six times, you want to take a moment and literally nine seconds and you want to hold the feeling. Now, there's a lot of emphasis in personal growth work and in the spiritual community on visualization. And yes, yes, visualization is really important it really is it's powerful everything in my life that i have created and manifested and generated has come through having a strong visual bead if you will on that thing that i'm seeking that i'm wanting that i'm desiring but what doesn't get discussed is the feeling that accompanies that vision. And I can't really think of anything in my life that I've manifested with that I had a strong visual on that I, that I didn't have any feeling on. In fact, the strong visual was, ended up being kind of minor. It really was the feeling that was in me by focusing my attention, my positive attention, my expectation that it was already mine on top of that visual. And see, this is the piece that most coaches, most trainers don't talk about. Maybe they don't know about it. Maybe they don't practice it that much. I don't know. But it really is where the rubber meets the road. So you could have not a really terribly clear visual, but you could have a powerful feeling. And then what matches that feeling shows up because that's how law of attraction works. That's how the energy, the energy of the universe functions, which is what Tesla was all about. So what I have been doing, I've tweaked this since I did part one, I, you know, because I've been playing with this in, in a variety of ways, trying to really maximize the 369 principle because of my awareness of the 3721 repetition hypothesis, and to bring this into a very efficient way of going about this so that you're not spending tons of time in your day doing the exercise but not actually executing on what you're being shown and guided to do because that's what happens right 
you have to tell me, you know, how's this experience been for you? And if you haven't started doing it, you can go back and watch part one and I'll tag it. I'll put it um, in the sequence here. So as this video comes to conclusion, it'll pop up and you can go back and you can look at part one to see, you know, how this is actually flushing out in your life. What I was finding is that it was taking up a lot of my time. I mean, I'm running a company and, and staff and a team and, 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 uh, you know, clients and strategy sessions and doing all kinds of things, blogging, and, and it's just been a very, very busy time. How do I keep cultivating my own toolbox so that the results that I want for my life are showing up with ease, keyword ease, and yet be able to do the things all day long I need to do, you know, get my book to the publisher and get everything out the door. And I'm going to talk about that in another video too, because there's once you call it in, you know, once you ask for that next life, that next level of life, that next level of success and accomplishment, it demands of you. It makes demands of you. It makes demand. It makes demands of your time. It makes demands on your attention. It makes demands on your resourcefulness. It makes demands on your enthusiasm and your ability to keep going even when you don't feel like you can keep going, you know, because you're leveling up every single moment. So what I've done is I think I have found my sweet spot. Now you're going to have to play with this and see what your sweet spot is. But essentially, this is what I did. I broke it down into three main categories. I have a lot that I'm desiring and I have a lot that I'm creating and generating. Sometimes I wonder, you know, how many lifetimes I'm going to have to live to get <laughs> this all done because I want everything. Like I'm that person that loves to experience everything with discernment, of course. Um, but nonetheless, it's, it's about finding a really efficient, powerful and impactful way of going about this so that I'm walking my walk. When I'm teaching it to you, I've already done it. I've already got results from it that are outstanding. So I can really speak to it from the heart. And then secondly, actually, you know, be able to teach it in such a way that it's easy for you. Because I have this concept that the smallest change for the greatest result. And that's really the key. The smallest change for the greatest result and your life unfolds like magic. So this is what I've done. I've picked three main areas of my life and they're, they're really pivotal areas that I feel encompasses pretty much everything that I have that in my creative workshop in my mind <laughs> that I want to experience in this lifetime. So the first category is my health. Health, as we know, look, we've just been through a horrendous experience globally regarding health and humanity. So I think I don't think there's anyone that can argue with me about whether health is like a number one priority. Nobody can argue that point with me. doesn't matter how much money you have. If you don't have vibrant, shiny, exuberant health, you don't have anything, regardless of what age you are. So health. So I started with my health category. Then I went into my wealth category. And so what's interesting about this, I am finding is that there's a correlation between the level of health, especially gut health. You know, if you've watched any of my other videos, you know, I've talked about the importance of gut health and the vagus nerve and the brain, how the brain fires. 
So when you get your health dialed, then you get your ability to focus totally dialed in. And that enables you to actually go after and achieve what it is that you want. Because if you're scattered in your focus, if you lack focus, if your focus is on something other than what you're creating, then it's just not going to happen. So having a really healthy body, fit body, healthy mind, and um, a brain that fires in its transmission and reception, and you've pretty much got it all zeroed in and you're creating from a really powerful place. So wealth, health, top echelon, right? Then I went into relationships. Now relationships, a lot of us consider to be something that are outside of ourselves. And if we're having relationship issues with people, we often think that it's about them, but it's, it's always about us. <laughs> even, if, even, even when it's about them, it's always about us. So as I was going through and I was developing the affirmation for my relationship category, I started out with it being about other people. You know, I love everyone and everyone loves me. Um, people champion me. My friends adore me. You know, that kind of stuff. And over the weeks, it actually transitioned into that being how I was being with me. So instead of it being about someone outside of me, it, it became about how I handled me, how I loved me, how I championed me, how I um, celebrate me, how I love me. And that enabled a lot of things to change in my relationship world, which I'm absolutely thrilled about. So those are my top three categories. Now, I bought a booklet. I love these. I love these kind of books. It's just a, a notebook like a student would use in school. And um, I just love them. I'm a, I'm a cursive person. I'm a scripter. I love to write things out. When I do, it's like I dial into it. Talk about that feeling. Like I just connect to the soul of the thing you know, when I'm writing it. And so there's a reason for that. And it's why I encourage you to write your goals out too. Don't type them into something. It's a minimal amount of neural pathways and synapses that fire. Whereas opposed to when you script, your entire neurology lights up. You, 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 you trigger everything. You get all the senses flowing. And there's nothing greater than writing something out from a sensory acuity perspective because it just connects you to the energy of that thing. And that makes it come faster and it makes it come easier. So what I started doing was writing it out three times a day and then saying it out loud three times a day. So I set my my alarm on my phone for every six hours sorry every two hours so six times a day basically from and i wake up saying these out loud now you may not you might want to put them on a card next to your bed so it's the first thing you put into your mind in the morning um and then i wake up saying them out loud because i have them off by heart because it comes from a feeling it's not coming from a script. <laughs> it did at first, but it doesn't anymore. And then when I meditate, have my morning meditation after I get up, then I write it out physically. And then, so that's two times. So that's two times now we've accomplished, right? So then after that, you only have to, you know, you set your alarm for every two hours after that until say you hit that sixth time. And then I always do it one last time before I fall asleep because it is a very powerful time for setting up your next day. That last three, four, five minutes before you fall asleep, whoa, 
That is a power moment right there. And when you can plug in what it is that you're creating into your mind, boom, like your unconscious mind is your servant and it goes to work for you. And I'm, I'm telling you, I'm seeing massive changes, massive changes. So I think that pretty much is it, you know? Point being is I get into the feeling of it each time, so six times a day, whether I write it or whether I see it out loud, and I hold the feeling for nine seconds. Nine seconds. It's power. So the 369 is really, truly all about the God code. You know, that is your divine alignment with the universe. So I always start my affirmations off with, I am so happy and grateful that. And then I speak it as if it already is done. And I love to script. I'm a cursive. I, to me, cursive handwriting is like an art form. So this is what it'll look like for me. So we've got health, wealth, and relationships after I've written it out. Now, when I first started doing it, it was kind of mechanical, and you might find that it is for you too. Then after I got into the flow of it, here's what shifted. On the outer world, everything. You know, I made some big decisions about my life, about my lifestyle. I've created two brand new platforms for my company that are online programs. One is Scale Up Society, which is a membership group for those solopreneurs that have a side hustle and they want to build it into a profitable business. And we're going to launch that really soon. It's very inexpensive. You get a monthly live group coaching call with me. You get templates on how to step through the process of building that business up. And it's only $49 a month. Like, how could you, and there's no commitment, no long-term commitment. We want you to come, learn, and then we want you to graduate. So I created that from this exercise. And then the other online program that I launched is our executive health coaching. So now we have a whole team of health coaches and we work with the CEOs and the owners and the leaders of the small to mid-sized companies and we get them on track with their health and with their mental attitude and their mindset and their emotions and, and their spiritual maturity, their spiritual growth is so powerful. We're literally, at Neuroengineering Institute, we're literally creating conscious people, conscious business leaders all across the country and the world. So because of these affirmations, all that creative flow just poured out of me. I've landed new clients. I finished my second book. It's 12 chapters. A lot has taken place just from this one exercise. So if you follow any of the, um, law of attraction videos or, or information that's out there. There's a concept of, you know, if you want to um, move towards something that you desire, but you have resistance on it and you're struggling, if you state what your affirmation is in a broad, ambiguous uh, statements, then it's easier to step into. If you get um, detailed about it, it actually speeds up the energy. And if you have any resistance on it, you'll just repel it. You'll just push it away. So what I did with these is I made them quite, um, quite broad. Although as I've gone through this and I actually am feeling it as I'm writing it, I'm seeing that it's, even though it seems like a broad brushstroke, you know, you could say a lot about wealth. 
this much cash flow, this much cash um, in the bank, this this much in assets. You know, you could really get granular, right? I didn't. I just picked one number for the year and then I made it an and more. So let's say it's a million dollars. So let's say it's one million dollars plus or one million dollars and more per year. So you want to write it in such a way that you leave it open ended. And yet you're setting a baseline for what the bottom line is and go high, go high with that baseline. So that's what I've been doing with the, uh, the 369 Tesla code. And I wanted to do a follow up with you, let you know what's happening with the results that I'm getting from that, how I have tweaked it and, um, what's happening for me on an internal level is just beautiful. I, I feel unstoppable. I feel alive. I feel like I know who I am. I know who I am and I have a beautiful relationship with me. So this is really the key and it's why I wanted to share it with you because I wish that for you as well. I wish you happiness. I wish you joy. I wish you success and freedom and um, love just amazing love. I've been doing a lot of podcast guesting. I'm going to start to load stuff up on different social media platforms. Make sure you follow me on Instagram at NEI for change. Make sure you join my groups on Facebook. I've got a couple groups over there. I'm going to be doing lives over there. And very soon the, the website is almost completely restored. It's way better than it was before. We had somebody hack it and take it down and trash it. And, um, you know, it just turned out to be this huge blessing because now the site is completely different. Look, it's beautiful. It's very forward looking. It's leading edge thought. And it's way, way better than the previous ones. So they did us a favor. So it's all good. And very soon I'm going to make a big um, announcement with that and send you over there to have a poke around. Um, I think that's it for me today. This was part two of the 369 Tesla Code. I'm Deborah Peters. I absolutely love doing what I do and sharing this information with you. And I can't wait to hear from you and find out how you're using the 369 code, what it's doing, how it's working in your life and what kind of results that you're getting. So definitely comment below, leave me a comment. I want to know who you are, how you are and how I can help you. Hit the subscribe button and the bell next to it and then you'll get notifications every time I upload a new video and some, con some new content. All right. Mwah. Many blessings. Take care. Bye.